Hello and welcome. Today on this very relaxed edition of Digital Foundry Let's Play, we're playing a very special mod for Minecraft that adds some very special lighting to the game. And to play it, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, John Linneman. Where you at, John? I am right here. I've come down from space to join you on this trek through this wonderful world that you've crafted, this fun house of ray tracing, if you will. But I think before we dive in, you should probably explain exactly what the heck this is that we're looking at. Yeah, this is a mod for Minecraft written by the author Sonic Ether that adds path traced global illumination into the game. And it's using the old Java version of Minecraft and uh, I think the 1.212 version of it with the Optifine shaders or Optifine optimizations, basically to make it run a bit better and um, also allow for shader editing. And my goodness, it is quite fantastic looking indeed. But uh, the reason why we're here to talk about it is the whole kind of hubbub about ray tracing with the PlayStation 5 reveal. And this is a very interesting version of ray tracing indeed. And we're running on two very different rigs to show it off. Uh, John, what are you running on there? So as usual, I have the venerable i9-7900X paired with an RTX 2080 Ti and 32 gigs of memory, which is great for this version of Minecraft. <laughs> and um, you're running something very different. Yes, um, I'm running on something that is technically, in most of our comparisons, a little bit more powerful than an Xbox One X, the GTX 1070 as the GPU with a Ryzen 1700X and 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 MHz. Um, but you may be looking at my screen wondering, gosh, that looks a bit chunky, even for Minecraft standards. Uh, to get this running, I'm playing the game at 720p and locking it to 30 FPS with Adaptive Sync. Basically, this mod is very heavy and it's even heavy on your rig, isn't it, John? Yeah, that's right. I'm running at 1080p with Adaptive Sync, but I'm hitting 60 FPS, but it is not 100% locked with the settings that we're using, though it is possible to adjust some things downward a little bit to improve it. But, you know, I, I think, Alex, that's enough talking out here. I think what, what you've constructed here is a shrine to path tracing and a series of rooms, each one more insane than the last, to showcase exactly what the heck this does and why it's so important for real-time graphics rendering. So, um, yeah, let's, let's Alex, go on in. I mean, before, just... before we go in, though, why don't you come over here for a second? Even though your shadow or your name is glitching out, if you look over here, you can actually see shadow map casting on the wall there with your uh, username, which is a, it's a neat touch. I absolutely adore that, actually. <laughs> Diegetic stuff like this is so cool. Um, but anyway, but yeah, <laughs> let's let's go through the path of path tracing. <laughs> The first room is very interesting. Um, this reminds me of basically Half-Life 2 demos with that kind of specular sheen bounce lighting going everywhere. Well, uh, this whole thing reminds me of the original Source presentation. Yeah, the I only know thing we're missing here is Gabe Newell talking <laughs> about, you know, welcome to Source 3. This time we have added path tracing. Oh my um, god. I can dream, yes. right? Um, but this so, is an interesting setup here because there is no direct lighting here at all. The, the area underneath here, which is lighting up the room that we're in, uh, is only indirectly lit itself. So we're seeing two exactly. bounces of lighting here to even light this room up at all. And there's even shadows. And John's going to place some blocks here, blocking it all up. And you'll see the room go basically pitch black. Exactly. So, and you know, start to clear out the blocks. You notice, you can actually sort of see the shadows generated in real time. Yeah. All this is happening in real time. You see the specularity of the pink block yeah, reflecting off of here you know we'll clear this up but it gets more amazing here you know if you start breaking through over here we'll let the sun in oh. you see that yeah sort of like the light just like pours into the room you can you, you can see the specularity on the back wall this this huge cone of light coming right in there you can even set that there and get a little bounce lighting on it it's uh the one thing that makes this kind of even work it's it's very heavy obviously um and it's not using the RT core on your rig. This is OpenGL, obviously, exactly. not Dir DirectX 10 or not DirectX 12 and or Vulkan. So it can't use the RT core for you. And it's a very specific version of ray tracing, actually. Uh, well, I'm going to have to cheat to get back up. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll get into some of the details on how this works in just a second. But uh, this, this showcases an interesting, more software-driven method for achieving... Uh, these effects yeah although as you can see the requirements are still extraordinarily high 
So 30 FPS, 720p for me. Your rig is more powerful than the most powerful current generation console, yeah. the Xbox One X, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next room. <laughs> yeah, this is. Oh, so gosh. Alex, what? A, oh, I guess I shouldn't go down that hall, huh? No, that's Let's a, that's go into this room. Scary hallway. Um, so this room, I wanted to show off basically three things. There's kind of the differentiation in the, the materials on the ground that have different levels of reflectivity. So you can see more of the reflected light and different hues of it basically on the material itself. And also this kind of skylighting above, which is affected both by the color of the sky, which is blue, you know, with a, like a bit of white from those clouds. And also there's a tiny bit of bounce lighting here from basically the dirt and the tree, giving it a green yep. hue. And it's this very glossy material that's not completely reflective. And it honestly just looks like architectural rendering from here. It looks, this is fantastic looking. <laughs> it does. Uh, I love this serene garden. Yeah. But, you know, the block light structure of Minecraft is actually key to uh, its implementation here, I think. Yeah, it's uh, talking with Sonic Ether, the Minecraft's ability to kind of, or its limitation to have the entire world always be known as being made of blocks. Uh, is what makes this so performant already as it is. Uh, basically, it has the conceit or assumption always that the blocks will just be either deleted or existing or That's right. not moving at all. So what keeps this so performant is that the fact that the blocks themselves cannot necessarily move. And those are the only thing taking into account for the GI, both the shadows from the blocks and the blocks themselves. So John, interestingly, in the corner here, you can see how he has a reflection if he gets near the wall. That isn't from the ray tracing itself. Rather, you can see that when he goes off screen, it disappears. Yep, exactly. It's a, it's a screen space calculation done for dynamic objects and I think transparencies as well too. So yeah, it's a hybrid solution for this then. And naturally the, the fixed block shape of Minecraft worlds is perfect for a voxelized structure. It's perfect. It's uh, because it's, you know, it just fits like a glove. And because these objects are non-moving and it's a binary uh, on off, you know, present or deleted like kind of that. situation. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, that makes the calculations easier, which is very different from uh, the sort of yeah. uh, the modern, well, not the modern, but the, the other uh, more uh, robust solution used by games such as Battlefield Five and, and uh, Metro. Yeah, those games can, you know, have, you know, contributions into the ray tracing from dynamic objects and skin dynamic objects as well. But they're obviously very expensive in their own right, too. But uh, let's go into the next room to talk about some more stuff as well. Yes, this this room is exciting. I, this I is actually one of my love favorite this. rooms. Yeah, this one this looks, is my favorite. This looks so cool. Um, basically, what I want to show off here was kind of the effect of the lighting hitting different colors and bouncing them off directly into the room. And depending upon the material, you can see more of that diffuse and specular reflection itself. Uh, and this this is a, you know this is actually something we probably mention often in the videos, and it's just a natural idea of yeah. you know light particles photons sort of bouncing off a of material and scattering the light against other materials nearby i mean this is how light functions in the real world and many games have ways of sort of faking this effect yeah uh, currently and it does exist but this is generated entirely in real time and, um, and you can you know, see that kind of when i move in front of it the, the the shadow is obscuring the light causing the reflection to also be obscured as well too it's exactly uh, i mean sure and if Go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry. And the interesting thing about this is uh, we've seen kind of voxel-based tracing demos in the past that use cones, but this one is actually tracing with rays through this kind of blocky structure. And it's a bit noisy, mainly because I'm running at 720p and there's not that many rays. And right. there's also the problem that these are very low resolution textures. I mean, it is Minecraft people. Uh, so they kind of block out a bit more, making them look a bit weird. But still, I think the, the overall effect is is phenomenal and you know you see the light comes in through through here the sun enters through it bounces up there you turn around you actually see the specular oh my God. Uh, image of the um, blocks behind us and, if and this is a perfect example because and it's something you're right we, we don't really see this in typical games these days where we have these bright primary colors no and it's uh, so RGB of course <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's just you know 
it's perfect for demonstrating the benefits of proper bounce lighting. It's why when you see the, the more simulated faked methods in, in actual shipping games, it tends to be most visible on things like a marketplace with bright red umbrellas yeah. and the sunlight sort of bouncing off of that. But, you know, <laughs> again, if, hey, that's a little bird there. But if we start placing blocks, it, it gets a little interesting as well because this you actually see the sort of the colors become almost additive yeah the they, light bounces off the red then bounces off the pink and it sort of it becomes a purplish uh, a deeper hue and if i place like uh let's place some blue blocks in here as well you start to mix colors and yeah, everything you can see the mixing over here it's so weird looking <laughs> uh very 80s kind of color schemes going on the back side of this is turned green almost uh uh the way this works is kind of interesting there's only in real time, it's doing one bounce for both the, the fuse global illumination and the specular reflection. So that's the only mainly real time component. Then after that's done, it accumulates by via a technique called surface caching, I believe, multiple bounces. So if I were to remove one of these walls right here, you can see that there's a bit of ghosting. Yep. That's because it's cleaned up in over time with temporal AA and because it takes about four frames for the lighting to completely generate perfectly almost. So the room will get lighter over time the, over more frames, over about four frames about. And, Sorry to destroy your masterpiece, oh, Alex. it's okay. I mean... It sort of demonstrates when we let the full light in here and the way that changes. It really does feel somehow very natural. Like your eyes just adjust to this and... Even though this is a completely fake world, uh, well, in the sense that it's it's extremely abstract. Yeah. And what I find so interesting about ray tracing and path tracing potential is what it can add to simplistic visuals. It's yeah. why Quake 2 is so fascinating and why I think this works so well. I mean, you can take an old game like Doom, like Quake, any of those, and by changing the lighting model, it completely rejuvenates yeah. uh, the game completely. And it, you don't need anything complex to make it look great. There's this also this uncanny feel here. It's like you're playing with Legos almost. And when I was yep. constructing this structure, trying to make sure these rooms, you know, showed off effects that I wanted to show off, I had to think about it in like extremely practical, real terms about exactly. how I was blocking off light and blocking it out or making sure that certain reflective objects are in a certain pattern. Um, it was all natural, and I imagine as a lighting artist, my goodness, that looks so good. As a lighting artist, this would become so much a more natural process than waiting for it to bake out and seeing if it looks right, or it would just and be- flat like, out more fun, yeah, really. Yeah, gosh, I, I had so much fun building this. Um, but I think, oh my goodness, my, wow, does that look really good. Um, I think going, just look at this bounce shadow over here. This is like two levels of bounce to get that. That's insane. Using redstone to achieve this. So. <laughs> Redstone, you know, is a, has a, it's a very key ingredient to the world of Minecraft. I know, so. it's like they look partially permeable. They, it's amazing looking. Um, but so let's go over to the next room. This room, I, I wanted to show off another property of the global illumination itself too, which was I blocked off the lighting and had it oh, hit. Whoops. Whoop. <laughs> you placed a candle. <laughs> shh, shh. Um, <laughs> I'll talk about those too soon. Those are cool. Um, yeah. But... Basically, I wanted to block off the lighting so that it was only hitting a very specific material and we could see the way it affects different materials. These are progressively exactly. darker and less specular materials. So this one's like white and highly specular. And, and so you can see if you look at the ceiling actually and all around it, you know, you get that specular reflection yeah, and from the light bouncing off that material. And the gray one has less specular reflection in the bounce light. And the black basically here, almost has, none at all. Exactly. And of course, this kind of highlights the limitations yeah. of the method here. Just, you know, it's very noisy. Yeah. But it's still effective. The thing is like in general, very, you know, kind of rough materials that are still a bit specular are really hard to get because the rays are super divergent and your performance basically quakes when you try and do it right. Um, but my goodness, these are interesting because the direct lighting for this version of the game that Sonic Ether made is actually using rasterization for the sunlight. So that is all rasterized specular right here on the block itself. But the candles are done fully through the path tracing. So this lighting right here, it's, mm -hmm. it's all path traced. No rasterization at all. Which, oh, the, my goodness. The, uh, yeah, the, yeah, you can see the screen space. 
element there with the lighting. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. The, on the on the specular, it, it, but it it breaks down a bit with the screen space effect, which you can turn off separately in the options. But that's it's true. still pretty cool. Um, I'm still looking back at this at this room with the redstone. <laughs> just look at this. This is this is bananas. I love this. I it's, it's like kind of mirror's edge looking. Oh, exactly, exactly it. what I was thinking. But like, real time. This just, and look look what it does to the blue, by the way. Check out the blue area. It's the, the color blue on your blue yeah, wall. Yeah, this is the apparently way it modifies. This is yeah, like this was green originally. This was blue. And when the lighting in the room has been bounced around in this red, it changes the actual surface color. That is something exactly. that is uh, impossible to do otherwise. Uh yep. I I this opens look, up so many look, opportunities. I hope with this little bit of sun peeking through here, you can actually see it sort of restores a bit of the green color. I know, right? Just there a, it is. Just yeah. a touch. You're like, wait, let me, yeah, like, remove that, that one. Look at that. Look, so the top right corner here is like a different tinge of green than the bottom left is because of the bounce lighting. And this is this is a consistent material, and it simply changes through uh, the, the lighting properties yeah. there. That's, that's amazing to behold. Yeah. So let's go above really quickly and just turn back around, and then I'll show yeah. off some other stuff that we got going on here. I kind of made this hallway just because I thought it looked hella cool, to be completely oh, yeah. honest. Absolutely, the light bouncing off this material. Yeah. I think we could use um, some candles here just to spice up the room a little bit. Gosh, and just I just love the way this, this specular from the wall you can see it on the adjacent wall. I know, right? You can see right it's behind tremendous. you. And actually, if you walk walk in front of this, uh, let's go in front of this yellow right here. I'm going to look at the yellow, and you pass in front of it with your avatar. Okay. Yeah. You should be able to see John's shadow crossing in front of the yellow every single time he crosses in front of it. Because his shadow is taking a part of the GI contribution, actually. His character model isn't but his shadow is exactly so there's a subtle change there yeah it's awesome looking but uh but boy my performance is uh <laughs> it's, it's okay it's like hanging right around 58 to 59 fps on an rtx 2080 ti that's a 1200 yeah. us dollar gpu or something like that right it's a very yes exactly 1080p people let's do this let's go back inside woohoo come on john i believe in you I'm coming so uh, okay, just down the mystery hall. Mystery hallway. This is uh, this, taking some. This is what I like to call the. Uh, this is the Assassin's Creed. Effect. <laughs> it is. Uh, when, I, when you first saw on like AC Unity when they did their interiors, of course that was entirely baked. But, but it, that's exactly what phenomenal. I was inspired by here by doing that. Um, just kind of trying to show that you can obscure the light and get all these indirect shadows everywhere. But this hallway is where I want to play with certain emissive properties that the GI enables. Like here, in this little room here, you can see how the candle is partially blocked, yet you can see its light bouncing all around the room itself. Even in exactly. the area behind where there's no light coming in directly from it, it's still lit. And as John walks past, you should see the screen space contribution of his GI kind of going in and out too, which is so cool looking. Yeah. Let's see if I place a candle back there. A torch on the wall. It looks like Lego. It's amazing. It really is something special. But then I let's see if I if I place a little block right there. Uh, it'll kind of <laughs> block in that. <laughs> oh, be careful! There is water above us. We could flood the cavern, by the way. So we have to be oh, careful. We don't, <laughs> we don't want to do that. Uh, but yeah, let's go a bit further ahead. I created another two demo rooms down here. Okay, so Let's go the first deep one into the to the chasm is here. If you can follow me, John. Yeah. And now we were talking about Quake Two. I couldn't oh. help but make something that looked like it would be straight out of the Quake universe. This is so cool because the lava, or I forget, it's the redstone or whatever it is beneath us, um, yeah. is an emissive texture, and the entire block is counted as an area light. And you can have an entire block of lava beneath you evenly lighting the entire space. That's basically impossible with real-time lighting in games the way it's now in rasterization because that's right. it's usually done through a point light or some sort of like arbitrary surface that will not actually have the volume. And it does all these cool things like create a grid pattern of shadows 
which will probably be lost on YouTube, honestly, here. <laughs> but it, that's true. This is very dark content. This is very dark red content, so it's not going to look bit really that great on YouTube. But I'll make a nice redstone wall over there. And like, look, you with can. With that beautiful specular. Uh, yeah, you can see that it stays in, even if it's off screen. John's specular reflection there, too. It's a bit noisy, obviously, given my completely low resolution here. But. If you can imagine John's GPU using the RT core to push this to the next level, that'd be really amazing too. It also I kind love of how you can you can create these natural shadows here as well. Yeah, right. Placing that wall there, everything just feels uh, correct, and that's that's the point of all this is to create very natural lighting. Yeah, and if it's very dark over there now, so let me uh, place some torches for you. Line the wall there. We'll just there we go. It's all lit up nicely there. Do I have a shadow emanating from me? Mm. From your perspective? Yes, yes. It do. should be in screen space, but it should it still is. look pretty I'm sweet. Just, it is, but yeah, it's there. <laughs> so for those of you still with us, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying this tour through the land of path tracing. Yeah. it's uh, it is a fun ride, I think. And if I have one last demo room, very far below here, there's a zombie down there. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Okay. Let's head on down. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, wait, I didn't actually fall. It's okay. Now I'm descending slowly. This okay. room I wanted to show off color matching. That it's an entirely room uh, of is there a zombie here? I hear zombie noises. Oh my god. This this is two different types of emissive blocks. One is blue and one is red. But when they bounce their light the four times around the room, the whole room takes on a purple hue, actually. That's right. Which is mind-bending. But if you look at the specular reflections themselves for the blocks, well, mm -hmm. they're red and blue. And this is something right. that you can't get in any game at all. And you can even block okay. it off, too. Well, by doing this, we sort of blend the colors together. Ooh. That's another thing you can see, that there's a slight... T temporal component so when you bl break blocks sometimes that you can see through yeah. them it's a bit weird exactly looking. But hey it strange. looks really cool um but basically sonic ether when we were talking to him about this he he was describing how he could get the game much more performant if uh if it was one probably using a more modern <laughs> renderer other than gl and if the the shader pack allowed for some more i guess it would say custom uh, you know custom programming it's done in a very kind of blind way there's not much yeah, exactly. That he can do about it to make it run and run better. But if this were running probably on like DX11 or Falcon, it would be. Oh my God, are we gonna go outside here, John? I'm working on it. Oh God, Digging it's so dark. <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> oh, I hear the sound of. Oh, there we go. Wow, Gl glorious light. Whoa. We made our way out. Shall we fly around the world and yeah, take a see look? What we can do. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of cool like natural things that happen. Uh, there's if we find a cave, that'd be something really cool. How about you? Let's go over here and check out all this water. Uh, actually, where'd you go there, John? Yeah, because uh, we haven't are. really showcased the water reflections. Oh yeah, that's uh, so we've been always kind of looking at kind of glossy reflections, but the reflections can be extremely sharp. Um, if you look over here. You can see everything reflected. That's right. And actually, if I go on to the other side, you should be able to see John reflected in the water too. And I see you reflected right there next to that moving lava bit. <laughs> and yeah, it's just uh, it's per it's a perfect mirror-like reflection. And if you look along the edge of the screen, you don't get any of the typical SSR artifacts from those reflections, but you do get it from the the dynamic objects, as you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but still. It's amazing. All dynamic objects seem to use screen space, while the static world, uh, well, what are these, mostly static. What are these cows doing? Oh, oh no! They're on fire. <laughs> they're on fire. Oh, no! I mean... So, there's a cave over here as well. Oh, is sort there? Of. Yeah, well, a small one. Do you remember Doom? This looks like diminished lighting in Doom. <laughs> well, it, it absolutely does. Which was best on the Atari Jaguar. Yep. Next to the CRY color. <laughs> This looks, uh, yeah, you can see the individual bounce light from here going like this, and you can modify it a bit. Oh my god, this is yellow block. Bye bye, John. 
Hey. <laughs> and are you placing some uh, lighting in there? Yes. It's it's well lit in here. And if I do this, you should see it pouring out. My goodness. It's like, Look at this. It's like gelatin. I can still see your name through them. That's really weird. But yeah, basically everything real time, everything looking very interesting and running. How, how's it going there? <laughs> I've, I'm kind of lost in your maze of. <laughs> I'm behind you. What? <laughs> <laughs> see, the magic of Minecraft. I am now a magician. <laughs> I love how you can see the noise here on this yellow block. Yeah, it does make you kind of wonder what further variations would be like this in the future. How much more performance Sonic Ether can extract from it, getting it to run better. Because obviously 720p30 on a nice GPU like this is a bit sad. But uh, I hope it gets uh, updates in the future. My goodness, look at this reflections here. And yeah, we're looking at a very standard map, really. This is a generated yeah. map with some with some changes we made and if you actually load up on some other servers where they've done a lot of work to build out these beautiful cities uh it benefits a lot yeah. from running with with ray tracing enabled and i just love the the sun glare in a distance and looking at these reflections it really is just a beautiful beautiful thing it completely changes the look of the game yeah i mean minecraft is known for its low res blocky graphics but all of a sudden it's like real life minecraft <laughs> But yeah, uh, this is just it's just too much fun to play around with. Is there anything else we should do before we close out this uh, session? I guess uh, maybe, maybe we can try to build some more yeah, like, random structures. Let's, let's try and build. I mean, what's the typical Minecraft structure before you start it up is always a house to keep yourself alive in the night. I guess what I could do. Watch that Why don't you come up and join me in the? Uh, the, the digital foundry uh, sky tower that I'm <laughs> constructing. Ooh. Oh my god. My GPU is about to keel over 80%. <laughs> I'm also at 80%. And all these well, are emanating with red lighting. Yes, of course. That's super silly. It's, it's akin to RGB lighting. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So but yeah, yeah as you can know, get the point, basically. Build, building this, the special digital foundry tower. <laughs> the one ray that, tracing enabled. The, is much more fun. Than it was in Apex Legends. <laughs> That's right. This is, this is uh, legitimate. It does make me wonder, actually, if we could see something like this on next-gen consoles. What do you think there, John? Like, something like this. I mean, it's um, running... This is still running in real time on my rig, and I think it's almost worth it for a game like Minecraft. It doesn't need super resolution. I, I agree. I absolutely think that. I think that this is a perfect example of the type of ray tracing we or path tracing we may see on next generation consoles. Uh, maybe simpler games, but also you know with a lower performance target. If you're happy to target 30 frames per second. Uh, and you take make some smart decisions. Yeah. Fake a few things. You know, uh, you can do some some amazing work. That's kind of the way I see it right now too. Um, I mean, obviously Minecraft is not the same as Metro Exodus in terms of world complexity, but darn if it does not look that much better as a result of being patrasic. This is right now. I agree. And we have all these. Look at. I just love all these nice natural shadows. <laughs> yeah. here with, I uh, like the corner darkening. Like you can get whoa what oh yeah it's floating oh these are half blocks oh yeah I understand exactly so I could build some windows not the Microsoft variety <laughs> well if you want I mean I, this is a Microsoft published right? game now, right? yeah and they still sell the Java version which was completely foreign to me but here we go wow you can see it's like progressively darkening the shadow here as you build out more of these yeah, things it's amazing yeah. But yeah, basically Minecraft, path traced, running in real time on the GPU, amazing looking, shows off a lot of really cool effects, and it's probably only going to get better in time. And I hope that you can try this out for yourself. Uh, this version of Minecraft is still available to be purchased, and uh, 
yeah, I say give it a try. It's gonna... Absolutely. I think I may actually end up using this in further videos to explain lighting techniques. It's that good. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a, it's a... It makes for a great demonstration that's yeah. all done in real time. Yeah. So. But yeah, so if you are still watching this for some reason, and I'm not sure why, <laughs> I hope you did enjoy our video talking about how path tracing works in Minecraft here through this mod from Sonic Ether, and uh, maybe learned a thing or two along the way. And if you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, well, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed, if you really want to, to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. We always like that. And uh, yeah, write a comment below about what you think about John's building skills here. I mean, just look at this tower. I mean, they're, they're okay. <laughs> if you guys wait, the, the finale is coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. And this is John and Alex. Signing off.